So let's go to crystallization part two. You can see that um the difference between the first one and this one is that here you will already have what you call the heat balances. So you can see the figure I have added temperatures and enthalpies already as opposed to simply the mass fractions. So for cooling crystallizers in here, basically simple cooling crystallizers, an example is the Svensson Walker crystallizer. The Q here is negative, mean, meaning heat is evolved, whereas for evaporative or evaporating crystallizers, the Q is positive, meaning heat is absorbed. And then for vacuum crystallizers, you'll notice that Q is equal to zero or you have what you call adiabatic cooling. So what are the letters in here? Just you already know F, M, L, C, V, and then all the X's. But then now we have what you call the pressure. So there is pressure term involved and temperature in there. So T prime would be the temperature of the outgoing vapor here. And then, of course, the temperature of the outgoing vapor would be the same as the temperature in here of the magma. And then you would have the enthalpy of the feed, the enthalpy of the mother liquor, enthalpy of the crystals. And here, you have the enthalpy of the outgoing vapor. So for the enthalpy balances, if there's no boiling point rise or no BPR, HV, enthalpy of the saturated vapor, ENT in here. Whereas if it's with boiling point rise, you will have another term here. BPR is equal to T prime minus T. So if the boiling point rise is zero, just like in here, where there's no bo boiling point rise, the T prime will just be equal to T. So how do we evaluate? So let's use the enthalpy concentration, for example, this one, I've already shown this to you earlier. If enthalpy concentration diagram is not available for the given system, estimate H using this one, this equation. So TR is the reference, temperature is equal to TL is equal to T prime. So HF or enthalpy of the feed is CPF TF minus TR or CPF TF minus TL. So what is the CPF? The CPF is the specific heat of the feed, whereas the CPL here is the specific heat of the mother liquor. And then the lambda is the latent heat of crystallization. Also, take note that the latent heat of crystallization, sorry, is the negative of the heat of solution. And then here, do take note that the heat of solutions of inorganic compounds in water is found, I think, in table two something because it depends on the uh, versions. Version eight is at different pages from version nine. So it depends on the edition. So this is an example of the enthalpy concentration diagrams. So as opposed to earlier, what you have was temperature versus concentration. You will have now the enthalpy versus concentration, and then the lines here are your temperatures. So also, it is important to take note of some of the heat transfer equations that we have. So Q is UA delta TLM. What is the delta TLM? That's the logarithmic mean temperature difference. So delta TLM is basically delta T2 minus delta T1 Ln of delta T2, T1. So you'll notice what is T1 and T2. So if there's water, for example, in here, there's cooling water. T1 is the incoming temperature of the cooling water. T2 is the outgoing. So that would be the T2 and T1 in here. And then Tf and Tl would be the feed temperature and the mother liquor temperature. That's why there's TF, TL, T1, and T2. And then to solve for the heat, MCP delta T. CP for water is 4.187 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin or 1 BTU per pound Rankin.
as I said earlier, this one, if we take note of this, the heats, negative Q of the feed is Q of the cooling water. 